The scent of lavender and lemon polish hung in the air as I scrubbed the kitchen counter, my mind drifting to happier times. Times when Alice's laughter filled this very room, her pigtails bouncing as she chased her father around land. Now, at sixty-five, I found myself once again preparing to comfort my daughter, though the circumstances were far from childish games. The phone rang, startling me from my reverie. Alice's name flashed on the screen. Mom? Her voice trembled. I need you. My heart clenched. What's wrong, sweetheart? Can you come over? I, I don't know what to do. Within the hour, I was at Alice's doorstep, a plate of her favorite oatmeal raisin cookies in hand. She opened the door, her eyes red-rimmed and puffy. Oh, honey, I said, pulling her into a hug. What happened? Alice led me to the living room, sinking onto the plush sofa. I set the cookies on the coffee table and sat beside her, taking her hand in mine. I got this in the mail today, she said, handing me an envelope. I pulled out a single sheet of paper, my eyes widening as I read the typed message. Your husband isn't who you think he is. Ask him about Rachel and the kids in Oakville. What does this mean? I asked, though a sinking feeling in my stomach told me I already knew. Alice shook her head, tears welling up. I don't know. Sam's on a business trip. He's not answering his phone. I squeezed her hand. Have you tried calling his office? They said he took a personal day. She let out a bitter laugh. A personal day in Oakville, apparently. My mind raced, trying to make sense of it all. Sam had always seemed like such a devoted husband. Charming, attentive, the perfect match for my ambitious Alice. But now? Maybe it's just a misunderstanding, I offered, though the words felt hollow even to me. Alice stood abruptly, pacing the room. A misunderstanding? Mom, he's been lying to me. There's another family out there somewhere. We don't know that for sure, I said, trying to calm her. Let's not jump to conclusions. She whirled on me, eyes flashing. Why are you defending him? I'm not, I said quickly. I just think we need more information before we do anything rash. Alice deflated, collapsing back onto the sofa. You're right. I'm sorry. I just— I can't believe this is happening. I wrapped an arm around her shoulders, remembering how small she used to feel in my embrace. Now she was a successful businesswoman, strong and independent. But in this moment, she was my little girl again, needing her mother's comfort. We'll figure this out, I promised. Together. Just then, the front door opened. Sam's voice called out, Alice, I'm home early. Alice stiffened beside me, her eyes meeting mine in panic. I gave her hand a reassuring squeeze as Sam entered the living room, his smile faltering as he took in the scene. "'What's going on?' he asked, his gaze darting between us. Alice stood, her voice steady as she held out the letter. "'Care to explain this?' Sam's face paled as he read the note. He looked up, his expression a mix of shock, and— "'Was that guilt?' "'Alice, I can explain,' he began, but Alice cut him off. "'Save it. I want the truth, Sam. All of it. Who's Rachel? And what kids in Oakville?' As Sam fumbled for words, I watched my daughter's world crumbling around her, and in that moment, I knew our lives would never be the same. Sam's face contorted into a mixture of shock and indignation as he read the letter. Alice, honey, this is ridiculous. It's gotta be some kind of sick joke. I watched my daughter's eyes narrow, her jaw clenching. A joke? Then explain why you took a personal day in Oakville when you were supposed to be on a business trip. Sam's Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed hard. I, I needed some time to think. Work's been stressful lately. In Oakville? Alice pressed, her voice rising. With Rachel and the kids? I placed a steadying hand on Alice's arm, feeling the tension thrumming through her body. Sam's gaze darted between us, a cornered animal searching for escape. There's no Rachel, he insisted, running a hand through his hair. No kids. Alice, you know me. Would I ever do something like that to you? The room fell silent, the weight of his question hanging in the air. I found myself searching Sam's face, the man I'd welcomed into our family, trying to reconcile the charming son-in-law with this nervous, evasive stranger before us. Alice's voice was barely above a whisper when she spoke. I thought I knew you, Sam. Now I'm not so sure. Sam stepped forward, reaching for her hand. But Alice recoiled. Baby, please, this is crazy. Someone's trying to mess with us, that's all. I couldn't stay silent any longer. If that's true, Sam, then you won't mind proving it. Let Alice see your phone, your email, your credit card statements. His eyes widened, a flicker of panic crossing his features before he masked it with indignation. 
Lola, with all due respect, this is between me and my wife. Don't you dare, Alice snapped. My mother has every right to be here. At least, I know I can trust her. The words hung in the air like a slap. Sam's shoulders sagged, and for a moment I almost felt sorry for him. Almost. Fine, he said, fishing his phone from his pocket. Here, look through it. You'll see there's nothing to find. Alice took the device, her fingers flying over the screen. I watched her face, seeing the hope and doubt warring in her eyes. After a few minutes, she looked up, her expression unreadable. There are no texts or calls to or from anyone named Rachel, she admitted. But there are a lot of calls to a number with no name. And your email password has binged recently. Sam threw his hands up. The unnamed number is a client, Alice. And I change my passwords regularly for security. You know that. I stepped in, my voice gentle but firm. Alice, honey, I think you need some time to process all this. Why don't you come stay with me for a few days? She doesn't need to leave her own home, Sam protested, but Alice was already nodding. I think that's a good idea, Mom, she said, her voice thick with unshed tears. I'll pack a bag. As Alice disappeared upstairs, I turned to Sam. I hope, for everyone's sake, that you're telling the truth. But let me be clear. If you've hurt my daughter, there will be consequences. Sam's face hardened. I've done nothing wrong, Lola, and I don't appreciate these accusations. Before I could respond, Alice returned, overnight bag in hand. The sight of her, so lost and vulnerable, broke my heart. I'll call you, she told Sam, not meeting his eyes. I just... I need some space to think. As we walked out the door, I heard Sam call after us, Alice, please, don't do this. But Alice kept walking, her head high despite the tears now flowing freely down her cheeks. As I helped her into the car, I knew one thing for certain. This was far from over. And I'd be damned if I let anyone, even Sam, hurt my little girl. The days following Alice's confrontation with Sam were a whirlwind of emotions. I watched my daughter oscillate between hope and despair, clinging to the possibility that it was all a misunderstanding while simultaneously preparing for the worst. He's been calling non-stop, Alice sighed, staring at her buzzing phone. We were sitting in my sunroom, the cheerful yellow walls a stark contrast to the gloom hanging over us. Have you answered? I asked, pouring her another cup of chamomile tea. She shook her head. I can't. Not yet. But— She hesitated, biting her lip. I've noticed things, Mom, things I can't ignore anymore. My heart sank. What kind of things, sweetheart? He's been working late more often. His stories about his trips don't add up. And last week I found a receipt for a jewelry store in his jacket pocket. Our anniversary isn't for months. I reached across the table, squeezing her hand. Oh, Alice? I need to know the truth, she said, her voice steadying with resolve. I'm thinking of hiring a private investigator. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. My mind flashed back to Alice's wedding day, her radiant smile as she walked down the aisle of our small-town church. Sam had looked at her like she hung the moon. Where had it all gone wrong? Are you sure that's necessary? I asked, even as I knew the answer. Alice nodded, her eyes shimmering with unshed tears. I have to know, Mom, one way or another. As much as it pained me, I knew she was right. Okay, honey, if that's what you need to do, I'll support you. The next week was a blur of clandestine meetings and hushed phone calls. Alice found a reputable detective agency, and I helped her gather the information they needed. All the while, Sam's calls and messages continued, growing increasingly desperate. Alice, please? His voice crackled through the speakerphone one evening. Just talk to me. We can work this out. I watched my daughter's face harden, her jaw set in determination. I'll talk to you when I'm ready, Sam. Not before. As she hung up, I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride. My little girl had grown into a strong, resilient woman, but that strength was tested when, ten days after hiring the detective, Alice received a thick manila envelope in the mail. It's from the agency, she whispered, her hands shaking as she held it. I sat beside her on the couch, my arm around her shoulders. You don't have to open it right now if you're not ready. Alice took a deep breath. No, I need to know. With trembling fingers, she broke the seal and pulled out a stack of photographs. As we flipped through them, my heart shattered for my daughter. There was Sam Arm with a pretty redhead. Sam, playing in a park with two young children. Sam, kissing the woman on the front porch of a quaint suburban home. Oh, God! 
Alice choked out, the photos slipping from her grasp and scattering across the floor. I pulled her close, feeling her body rack with sobs. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I'm so, so sorry. As I held her, my mind raced. How could Sam have done this? How could he have built an entire secret life while married to my daughter? Alice's sobs gradually subsided, replaced by an eerie calm. She pulled away, wiping her eyes, and I saw a steely glint in them that I'd never seen before. Mom, she said, her voice steady despite the tear tracks on her cheeks. I need your help. We're going to make Sam pay for what he's done. In that moment, looking at my daughter's determined face, I realized that our ordeal was far from over. It was just beginning. And God helped Sam when Alice was through with him. Whatever you need, honey, I promised, my own resolve hardening. I'm right here with you. Little did I know just how far we'd go in pursuit of justice and revenge. The morning after we received the detective's photos, I awoke to find Alice's bed empty. Panic gripped me until I heard muffled sounds from the study. I found her hunched over my old desktop computer, her eyes red-rimmed from lack of sleep. Alice, honey, have you been up all night? I asked, my voice thick with concern. She looked up, her face a mask of determination and barely contained rage. I couldn't sleep, Mom. Not after what we saw. So I did some digging of my own. I pulled up a chair beside her, dreading what she might have uncovered. What did you find? Alice took a deep breath. It's worse than we thought. Sam doesn't just have another family. He has another life. She turned the screen towards me, revealing a social media profile for a Samuel Thompson in Oakville. The profile picture showed Sam, our Sam, grinning with his arm around the redhead from the photos. Two smiling children completed the picture-perfect family portrait. He's been living a double life for years, Mom, Alice said, her voice cracking. He has a whole other identity, a successful real estate business in Oakville. Those kids, they're six and four. He's been lying to me our entire marriage. My heart shattered for my daughter all over again. I reached out to comfort her, but she shrugged off my touch, standing abruptly. I need answers, she declared. I'm going to Oakville. Alarm bells rang in my head. Alice, wait. Think this through. What good will confronting them do? She whirled on me, eyes flashing. What good? Mom, I need to know the truth. I need to see it with my own eyes. And that woman, Rachel, she deserves to know, too. I stood, grasping her shoulders gently. I understand, sweetheart, but barging in there could be dangerous. We don't know how Sam will react if he's cornered. Alice deflated slightly, sinking back into her chair. You're right, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. An idea struck me. What if we bring the mountain to Mohammed? Alice looked at me, confused. What do you mean? Sam doesn't know we've uncovered his secret, I explained. What if we set a trap, invite him home, make him, th make him think you're ready to reconcile, then confront him with what we know? A slow, almost predatory smile spread across Alice's face. And record everything. Get him to confess on camera. I nodded, a mix of pride and apprehension swirling in my chest. Exactly. We'll have irrefutable proof, and he won't be able to wiggle his way out of it. Alice's fingers flew across the keyboard, pulling up Sam's number. I'm calling him now. He'll be so relieved. He won't suspect a thing. As she dialed, I couldn't help but marvel at my daughter's strength. The sweet little girl who once cried over scraped knees was now a force to be reckoned with. Sam? Alice's voice was honey-sweet, betraying none of the turmoil beneath. Hi, it's me. I... I think I'm ready to talk. Can you come over tonight? I watched as she masterfully wove a tale of loneliness and regret, luring Sam into our web. When she hung up, her eyes met mine, blazing with determination. He'll be here at seven, she announced. We have work to do. The next few hours were a flurry of activity. We set up hidden cameras, prepared a script of questions, and steeled ourselves for the confrontation to come. As the clock ticked closer to seven, I saw Alice's resolve waver for just a moment. Mom, she whispered, what if I'm not strong enough to face him? I cupped her face in my hands, my heart swelling with love and pride. You are the strongest person I know, Alice. You can do this, and I'll be right here with you every step of the way. The doorbell rang, shattering the moment. Alice straightened her shoulders, took a deep breath, and nodded. Let's end this, she said, moving towards the door. As I watched her go, I knew that whatever happened next would change our lives forever. The time for truth had finally come. The tension in the room was palpable as Sam stepped through the doorway, 
Alice's face was a mask of calm, but I could see the storm brewing behind her eyes. I retreated to the kitchen, close enough to intervene if needed, but giving them space for this confrontation. Alice, honey, I'm so glad you called. Sam's voice drifted in, sickeningly sweet. I've missed you so much. Have you, Sam? Alice's tone was cool, controlled. Or have you been too busy with your other family to notice I was gone? The silence that followed was deafening. I peered around the corner, seeing Sam's face drain of color. What are you talking about? He stammered. Alice's laugh was bitter. Don't insult me, Sam. I know everything. Rachel, the kids in Oakville, your entire double life. Sam's shoulders sagged, the facade crumbling. Alice, I can explain. Explain? Alice's voice rose. Explain how you've been lying to me our entire marriage? How you have two children I knew nothing about? I watched as Sam reached for her, but Alice recoiled. Don't touch me, she hissed. It was a mistake, Sam pleaded. I never meant for it to go this far. I love you, Alice. You're my wife. And what's Rachel? Alice demanded. What are those children? Sam's face crumpled. A moment of weakness that spiraled out of control, but, but I want to make it right. I'll end it with Rachel, I swear. We can start over, just you and me. I felt my blood boil at his audacity. How dare he think he could manipulate his way out of this? Alice's next words chilled me to the bone. You're right, Sam. We are going to start over, but not in the way you think. She pulled out her phone, playing a video of Sam with his other family. His face paled further. How did you? I hired a private investigator. Alice cut him off. I have everything documented. Your trips, your fake business, the money you've been funneling to support them. Sam's demeanor changed instantly, desperation replaced by anger. You had no right to spy on me. And you had no right to betray me, Alice shouted back, to lie to me every single day for years. I stepped into the room then, unable to stay back any longer. I think you should leave, Sam. He whirled on me. This is none of your business, Lola. My daughter is my business, I retorted, standing my ground. Alice placed a hand on my arm, her voice steady. It's okay, Mom. Sam was just leaving anyway. Sam's eyes darted between us, realizing he was cornered. Alice, please, we can work this out. I'll do anything. Anything. Alice's voice was dangerously soft. Then pack your bags and get out of my house. I want you gone by morning. You can't be serious, Sam sputtered. Where am I supposed to go? Alice's smile was cold. I hear Oakville's nice this time of year. With that, she turned her back on him, effectively dismissing him. Sam stood there, mouth agape, before storming out, slamming the door behind him. As soon as he was gone, Alice collapsed into my arms, her body shaking with sobs. I held her tight, my heart breaking for her pain. You did it, sweetheart, I murmured. You stood your ground. I'm so proud of you. Alice pulled back, wiping her eyes. It's not over, Mom. This is just the beginning. I saw a fierce determination in her gaze that both thrilled and frightened me. What do you mean? Sam thinks he can walk away from this, start over with his other family, Alice said, her voice hardening. But I won't let him. He needs to face the consequences of his actions. Alice, I cautioned, revenge won't heal your pain. She shook her head. This isn't about revenge, Mom. It's about justice. For me, for those children, even for Rachel. Sam doesn't get to play God with people's lives and walk away unscathed. As I looked at my daughter, I realized she had changed irrevocably. The trusting, loving woman I knew had been replaced by someone harder, more cynical. And as much as it pained me, I knew I had to support her through whatever came next. What do you need me to do? I asked, steeling myself for the battle ahead. Alice's smile was grim. We're going to Oakville, Mom. It's time Rachel learned the truth, too. The weeks following Alice's confrontation with Sam were a whirlwind of activity. My daughter, once so trusting and open, had transformed into a woman on a mission. I watched with a mixture of pride and concern as she meticulously planned her next move. Mom, I need your help, Alice said one morning, spreading papers across my kitchen table. We're going to host a family gathering. I raised an eyebrow. A gathering? Alice, are you sure that's wise? She nodded, her eyes gleaming with determination. It's the perfect cover. We'll invite both families, ours and Rachel's. Sam won't be able to refuse without raising suspicions. As much as it pained me, I had to admire her cunning. And then what? Then we expose him, Alice said simply, in front of everyone. The next few days were a flurry of phone calls and preparations. 
Alice crafted a story about wanting to mend fences with Sam, insisting on a big family dinner to celebrate their reconciliation. I marveled at her ability to keep her voice steady as she spoke to him, not betraying an ounce of her true intentions. The day of the gathering arrived, and I felt sick with anticipation. Alice, however, was the picture of calm as she greeted guests, playing the perfect hostess. "'You're doing great, sweetheart,' I whispered as I passed her in the hallway. She gave me a tight smile. "'I have to, Mom. I can't let him win.' As the house filled with chatter and laughter, I kept a watchful eye on Sam. He seemed nervous, constantly checking his phone and glancing at the door. When the doorbell rang again, he visibly tensed. Alice answered it, and I heard her cheerful voice. "'Rachel, I'm so glad you could make it. And these must be the kids. Come in, come in.' The room fell silent as Rachel entered, confusion etched on her face. Sam's other wife was pretty, with kind eyes that now darted around the room uncertainly. Two children clung to her legs, sensing the sudden tension. Sam stood frozen, his face ashen. Rachel, what, what are you doing here? Before Rachel could respond, Alice stepped forward, her voice ringing clear. I invited her, Sam. I thought it was time our families met, don't you? The silence that followed was deafening. I watched as understanding dawned on Rachel's face, quickly followed by horror and anger. Sam, she choked out, what's going on? Alice's voice was steel. Why don't you tell her, Sam? Tell everyone how you've been living a double life, how you have two wives, two families in two different states. Gasps and murmurs filled the room. Sam's parents looked shell-shocked while his sister burst into tears. Rachel stumbled backward, clutching her children close. Is this true? She demanded, her voice breaking. Sam's eyes darted wildly around the room like a cornered animal. I, I can explain, he stammered. But Alice wasn't done. She produced a folder, spreading documents across the coffee table. Bank statements, travel records, birth certificates, she announced. Everything that proves Sam's deception. I watched as Sam's world crumbled around him. His parents turned away in disgust, while Rachel's sobs filled the air. The children, confused and frightened, began to cry. In that moment, I saw Alice falter for the first time. The weight of what she had done, the lives she had upended, seemed to hit her all at once. She swayed slightly, and I rushed to her side. Alice, I whispered, maybe we should. But she straightened, shaking off my concern. Her eyes met Sam's, and I saw a flash of the hurt, betrayed woman beneath her hard exterior. It's over, Sam, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. You've lost everything. As chaos erupted around us, Rachel's angry shouts, Sam's desperate pleas, the confused cries of family members, I held my daughter close. She had won, but at what cost? The reckoning had come, and none of us would ever be the same. The aftermath of Alice's revelation was chaos incarnate. Shock waves rippled through the room as Sam's duplicitous life lay bare for all to see. I watched, heart pounding, as the scene unfolded like a car crash in slow motion. Rachel, Sam's other wife, stumbled backward, her face a mask of disbelief and horror. How? How could you? She choked out, tears streaming down her face. Sam, pale and sweating, looked frantically between Alice and Rachel. I can explain, he stammered, but his words fell flat in the charged atmosphere. Alice stood firm, her voice steady despite the trembling I could see in her hands. There's nothing to explain, Sam. The evidence speaks for itself. As if on cue, Sam's parents stepped forward, his mother's face contorted with anger and shame. Samuel James Henderson, she hissed, how dare you bring this disgrace upon our family? The room erupted into a cacophony of voices, accusations, questions, and cries of disbelief. I moved to Alice's side, ready to support her if needed, but she remained resolute. Everyone, please, Alice called out, her voice cutting through the noise. I know this is a shock, but there's more you need to know. She produced a stack of financial documents, spreading them on the coffee table. Sam hasn't just been lying about his personal life. He's been embezzling from both his companies to fund this double life. Fresh gasps of horror filled the room. Sam's father, a respected businessman himself, looked as if he'd been struck. Is this true, son? He demanded. Sam's silence was damning. Rachel, who had been quietly sobbing, suddenly straightened. The business trips, she said, her voice hollow. They were never real, were they? You were just shuttling between us. Alice nodded grimly. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I only found out recently myself. As the two women shared a look of understanding, 
I felt a surge of pride for my daughter's compassion in the face of her own pain. The moment was shattered by Sam's desperate lunge towards the door. You can't do this to me, he shouted, his composure finally cracking. I'll lose everything. Alice's brother-in-law, a burly man named Mike, blocked his path. You've done this to yourself, Sam, he growled. Trapped, Sam whirled back to face the room. His eyes, wild with panic, landed on his children, clinging to Rachel's legs. Please, he begged, think of the kids. We can work this out, can't we? It was Rachel who answered, her voice steely with newfound resolve. No, Sam. We can't. It's over. As if those words were a signal, Sam crumpled to the floor, sobbing. The sight of this once charming man reduced to a blubbering mess was almost pitiful. Alice stepped forward, her face a mix of emotions I, I couldn't quite decipher. I've already contacted both companies' legal departments, she announced. They'll be launching full investigations. And Rachel, she turned to the other woman, I have a lawyer friend who can help you with whatever comes next. Rachel nodded gratefully, pulling her children close. As the initial shock began to wear off, people started to move. Sam's parents huddled in a corner, whispering furiously. Rachel was comforted by some of Alice's friends. And Sam? Sam sat alone, abandoned by everyone. I approached Alice, who stood watching it all with an unreadable expression. You did it, sweetheart, I said softly. It's over. She turned to me, and I was startled to see tears in her eyes. Is it, Mom? She whispered. Why doesn't it feel like a victory? Before I could respond, Rachel approached us, her children in tow. Alice, she said hesitantly, I... I don't know what to say. Thank you seems inadequate, but... Alice managed a small smile. That... You don't have to say anything. We're both victims here. As the two women embraced, I realized that this wasn't an ending, but a beginning. The real challenge, healing and moving forward, was just starting. And as I watched my daughter comfort the woman who had unknowingly shared her husband, I knew that whatever came next, Alice would face it with the same strength and grace she'd shown today. The storm had broken, but the aftermath was yet to come. The weeks following Sam's exposure were a whirlwind of legal battles, emotional upheavals, and unexpected alliances. I watched my daughter navigate this storm with a grace and strength that both awed and worried me. One crisp autumn morning, Alice called me over to her house. As I entered, I found her sitting at the kitchen table with Rachel, heads bent over a stack of papers. Mom, Alice said, looking up with tired eyes, we need your advice. I sat down, noting the legal documents spread before them. "'What's going on, girls?' Rachel spoke first, her voice trembling slightly. "'The divorce proceedings are almost finalized, for both of us. "'But—' "'But Sam's trying to claim he has no assets,' Alice finished, her jaw clenching. "'He's trying to leave us both with nothing.' "'My blood boiled at Sam's audacity. "'That lying cheating—' "'We know, Mom,' Alice cut me off gently. "'But we have a plan.' We just need your help to pull it off. As they outlined their strategy, I felt a mix of pride and apprehension. My daughter and the woman who had unknowingly shared her husband had formed an unlikely alliance, determined to see justice done. The next day found us in a sleek downtown office, facing Sam and his lawyer across a polished conference table. Sam looked haggard, his once charming smile replaced by a permanent scowl. Let's make this quick, his lawyer began. My client has already stated he has no assets to divide. Alice leaned forward, her voice steady. That's interesting, Sam, because Rachel and I have been doing some digging. Sam's face paled as Alice produced a thick folder. We found your offshore accounts, she continued, the ones where you've been funneling money from both your businesses. Rachel chimed in, her quiet voice carrying a newfound strength. We also uncovered the property you bought in the Cayman Islands the one you thought no one knew about. Sam's lawyer sputtered, but Alice wasn't finished. We're prepared to turn all of this over to the authorities unless you agree to a fair settlement for both of us. The room fell silent as Sam's world crumbled around him once again. His lawyer whispered urgently in his ear, but Sam seemed beyond hearing. How? He finally croaked. How did you find out? Alice's smile was cold. You underestimated us, Sam. Both of us. That was your biggest mistake. What followed was a flurry of negotiations, with Sam and his lawyer fighting a losing battle. By the end of the day, both Alice and Rachel had secured fair settlements, ensuring financial stability for themselves and Rachel's children. As we left the office, I saw Alice sag slightly, 
the weight of the past months finally showing. I wrapped an arm around her shoulders. It's over, sweetheart. You did it. She looked at me, tears shimmering in her eyes. We did it, Mom. I couldn't have gotten through this without you. Rachel approached us, her face a mix of exhaustion and relief. Alice, I... I don't know how to thank you. Alice surprised me by pulling Rachel into a hug. We helped each other. That's what matters. As I watched these two women, both betrayed by the same man, find strength in each other, I felt a surge of hope for the future. Months later, we gathered for a small celebration at Alice's house. Rachel and her children were there, by, along with close friends who had supported us through the ordeal. As I looked around the room, I saw smiles where there had once been tears, laughter where there had been pain. Alice clinked her glass, calling for attention. "'I want to make a toast,' she said, her voice strong and clear, "'to new beginnings, to unlikely friendships, and to the strength we find in ourselves when we're tested.' As glasses were raised and cheers echoed, I felt a profound sense of pride. My daughter had faced her darkest hour and emerged not just victorious, but compassionate. She had turned a tale of betrayal into one of resilience and hope. Looking at Alice now, surrounded by love and support, I knew that whatever challenges life might bring, she would face them with the same courage and grace she'd shown throughout this ordeal. And I would be right there beside her, every step of the way. The storm had passed, and in its wake, we had all been transformed. As the evening wound down and guests began to leave, Alice caught my eye across the room. Her smile, bright and genuine, told me everything I needed to know. We had weathered the storm, and we were stronger for it.